I guess? I don't really know how this works yet, but I seem to be... absorbing people? Hmm. That's gross. My name is Rosmi, and my tiger friend here is Bomb. He used to have bones, but now he doesn't. I keep his soul in my lantern, and he makes things crispy. Nice to meet you, Rosmi. It's good to have some actual company. I object to... Shut, Shut up! up. This is Indivisible, developed by Lab Zero Games and published by 505 Games. Indivisible is a 2D platformer slash RPG. You take on the role of Ajna, who uh, is a young martial arts student who loses her mentor slash father at the beginning of the game and goes on a quest for revenge. It's fairly typical stuff. What's interesting for Ajna is that she has the ability to absorb people into her mind or into her inner space and then bring them out uh, for combat and things like that. So you do, like, you rack up a fairly large party in this game. Uh, gameplay wise, the game mixes between a kind of 2D platformer, so you've got like wall jumping and traversal, things like that, slides, you know, that kind of jazz. And then combat wise, you take on, uh, basically your party members, up to four, are assigned the four face buttons. And then you use those face buttons and directions to give those particular party members attacks. So you're not turn-based necessarily uh, there is a cooldown on after you've used a party member but you can have multiple attacks so you can see that there are like multiple squares or triangles underneath characters and things like that and playing this on PlayStation so you can you know space it out so that everybody's getting an attack and the enemy isn't getting too much chance for counters or you can you know just use all of your attacks in one go and get a big massive combo going uh, different tilts on the sticks will do different things so you'll do heavier attacks with down attacks and you'll do uh, like juggles and things if you tilt up. Certain characters do uh, stocks. So this guy with the sword here, he can stock up an attack and make himself a bit stronger for his next attack if you do a down tilt. As you can see, uh, graphically, it's a beautiful game. It's hand-drawn animations, uh, nice flow to it. If you've seen uh, Lab Zero's previous game, Skullgirls, you kind of know what's happening here. It's got like, like beautiful animation. Uh, the game is a ton of fun to play. Uh, I really wish I had played more of it. Um, I'm not very far into it. I've gotten a couple of party members, so there's still a lot more for me to collect, but I'm really, really digging this game. Indivisible is available on PS4, Xbox One, Linux, Mac, uh, Windows PC, and Nintendo Switch, but currently at time of recording, the Nintendo Switch version has yet to release. But it's really, really good, so, you know, Get it. has its benefits. This is Disco Elysium. Developed by uh, Zaum and published also by Zaum. No, 
don't know how you're supposed to pronounce that, but anyway. Disco Elysium is an isometric um, CRPG. You take on the role of unnamed amnesiac detective who uh, kind of having a bad day. Uh, doesn't really remember anything about himself, but he's got to solve a murder. And I don't think he really wants to do it. Anyway, he's having a bit of an existential crisis. In this game, you have four branches of skills. So you have... Um, hang on, I have these written down. Because <laughs> there's no way I was going to remember them. Uh, intellect, uh, Psyche, Physique, and Motorics. Now, I think most of them make sense, but Motorics, you can kind of think of it as, um, like technical skill, like skill with technology uh, or dexterity, it's that kind of thing. It's like how good are you with, with gadgets or how good are you with lockpicks. Okay. And then underneath those uh, four branches or within those four branches there's another six skills. So you've got like 24 different things. But the way they uh, manifest themselves in the game is the most interesting part because they manifest themselves as other characters kind of. I know that didn't make sense. Think of it this way, you have one skill that's basically logic and then you have another skill that's uh, electrochemistry and then you've got another skill that's drama, we'll say. So logic will, will talk to you as a, as a character and it will say hey and it will say logic things, you know, they will just help you deduct things from the crime scene, that kind of thing. Uh, drama will talk to you and be like, hey, we need to make this, you know, better, the explosions, you know, this is really terrible things, and that kind of thing. But it'll also help you lie really effectively. Electrochemistry is for, like, drugs and shit like that, so it will help you identify drugs. Uh, it'll also give you uh, somewhat resistance to it. So if somebody like sticks you with a needle or whatever, you'll be okay. But it also introduces substance abuse. So the electrochemistry guy will be like, hey, there's some drugs on the table over there. Why don't we take them? Come on, come on, let's do it, let's do it. Uh, and you'll have to pass a skill check to not do it. <laughs> or to do it if you wanted to. You can intentionally fail the skill check. It's really interesting in the way it plays against you. Because if you put a lot of points into drama, we'll say, you'll be more susceptible to doing dramatic things. Uh, you know, singing karaoke or shouting at the top of your lungs, and you might not have, you might not be able to stop yourself from doing that. Like the drama will help you uh, lie, and it will help you like uh, bring people around to your to your way of thinking because you can be very charismatic. But it has downsides. They all they all have this kind of thing. Like logic will help you deduct from a crime scene really well. It'll help you pick out flaws in people's arguments and that kind of thing. But it makes you super fucking boring. And nobody wants to hang out with you, so there's that kind of thing as well. There's a cool, uh, there's a tagline for the game, and it's like, what kind of cop are you? And it's a question you get asked by your brain, uh, like, two hours into the game, maybe three hours into the game. It's like, what kind of cop are you? And it asks you, like, this questionnaire <laughs> of how you would respond to things. And the different categories it gives you is like, uh, what was it? it's like, you can be, um, Superstar cop who's like, you know, kicks the door in, guns blazing, does drugs, you know, strippers, all that kind of thing. Got Apocalypse cop who just wants to blow the whole thing up, you know, doesn't give a shit about anybody. And you've got Boring cop who's like, uh, by the numbers, he's got to do everything right. I'm just going to do my job and I'm going to go home. I'm going to get up and I'm going to do it again. And he's got uh, the one I ended up getting, which was Sad cop. <laughs> it's that like, you're sorry that you even have to exist. And I don't want to bother you, but we got to do this. And, you know, isn't life hard and everybody has it tough. So I guess I'm a bit of a sappy shithead. But anyway, that's hilarious. Gameplay-wise, it's super text-heavy. You're going to be seeing walls of text all over the place. Uh, some of it is voiced, most of it is not. Uh, there's no actual combat in the game. It's all done through conversation branches and dice rolling in the background. Uh, so you have like a skill check you can make and if you've ever played a tabletop RPG You'll know you'd roll the dice to see if you beat that skill check, you know, it's a random number and you hope you beat it uh, The game obviously does that for you because you don't have time to be rolling dice. Could you save scum the game? Yes, you could save before you have to make a decision and if you don't get the decision you want you can just roll it back um, Don't do that. It's considerably more fun for you to not to do that do it that way Just play your character the way you want to play them I'm having so much fucking fun with Disco Elysium. Uh, I haven't had a lot of time to play it, but what I have played is fucking brilliant. Uh, this game is actually amazing. 
It's currently only on Windows PC, but it has been announced that they will be porting it to PS4 and Xbox One in 2020. So do keep an eye out for it if you haven't got a PC. It didn't seem very taxing on my own PC, so if you have one, you could probably run it. Um, but if not, you know, keep an eye out for it uh, on console of your choice, except Switch. This is the Bradwell Conspiracy, developed by A Brave Plan and published by Bossa Studios. The Bradwell Conspiracy is a first person uh, puzzle game. Basically you are uh, somewhere in the near future uh, attending a fundraiser for the Stonehenge Museum that doesn't exist at the moment but I guess it does in the future and something goes wrong and you get trapped in the, the museum with one other uh, person but you can't see this person and you need to use your uh, future goggles to take pictures of your surroundings and send them to this other person and then they'll tell you how to proceed in puzzling and things like that. So gameplay wise it's kind of interesting in that you kind of just take pictures of the environment and um, uh, the game kind of tells you what to do or, or gives you um, tips on how, on how to solve some puzzles and things like that. It's very narrative heavy like the puzzles aren't super difficult like you could probably work them out yourself. Uh, it's fun to kind of just take pictures of random shit in the environment and see what uh, what your partner's response to them is. That, that's kind of funny. Um, but overall, the game itself is not uh, great. The voice work is really good. It's probably its best suit, but graphically not super impressive. Uh, and performance is really bad. It, it jitters a lot. And I encountered a lot of progress breaking bugs where I would have to reload the game or uh, completely turn off or sorry completely close down the, the game and open it again uh, some of them I was just straight up stuck that I would just have to restart from an earlier autosave and things like that the way the game works is that you take a picture and then the picture is sent and then you get a response but there were plenty of times where I would take a picture and I would get no response or the audio would drop out like there's some serious performance problems with the game I mean, I did enjoy the story for what it is. It's kind of pulpy sci-fi stuff, but not enough to really recommend it. It's just too glitchy, um, and it's kind of a frustrating game in that sense because you know the solution to the puzzle and you perform the solution to the puzzle, but the game doesn't recognize that you did it, so it's kind of annoying. Anyway, the, um, the Bride of World Conspiracy is on PS4, uh, PC, and I think it's on Xbox as well. Um, you can give it a try if you find it, <laughs> if you find it a bit cheaper, maybe. I don't know. Um, I can't really recommend it. <laughs> the poster might as well say, want to request your annual leave? Unless you book a year in advance, don't bother! This is The Outer Worlds, developed by Obsidian Entertainment and published by Private Division, which is a subsidiary of Take-Two Interactive. So The Outer Worlds is a first-person RPG. The easiest way to describe it, and perhaps a way that Obsidian does, doesn't want it to be described, but it's pretty much Fallout. Fallout has kind of shit the bed lately, but uh, Obsidian and um, the writers that were brought on for The Outer Worlds um, are some of the people who made the original Fallout, so that's Fallout 1 and 2, the top-down isometric RPGs. Uh, you can see a lot of that uh, in the Outer Worlds, um, just from the writing and the general world. So the setting for the Outer Worlds is that um, these kind of big mega corporations have started uh, to colonize um, planets 
it's very kind of anti capitalist kind of dystopia thing going on here in that people are kind of indentured to different corporations and things like that uh, but it's also got a lot of silliness it's not necessarily slapstick but there's a lot of kind of funny tongue-in-cheek jokes going on this kind of scientist character Phineas Wells is is, is very well written he's quite, he's fairly hilarious Story-wise, you are a member of this expedition that was sent out to colonize this these worlds, but your faster-than-light travel thing took you for off course, and you've been stuck in hibernation cryosleep or whatever you like. Uh, but you've been thawed out now by Phineas, and he's like, "Hey, uh, this this isn't exactly going the way we wanted it to. So if you could help me fix it, that'd be great." Gameplay-wise, you build a character with different traits that if you have played Fallout, you will find them very familiar. It's like, do you want to be good with melee weapons? Do you want to be good with guns? Do you want to be really strong? Do you want to be smart? Do you want to be good at medicine or engineering? That kind of thing. And that will filter through into your gameplay style. So, you know, if you've gone heavy on weaponry, you're probably going to be fighting a lot. If you've gone heavy on intelligence stuff, you're probably going to be either talking your way around problems or, uh, you know, sneaking around, unlocking doors and things like that. For the majority of the game, you're kind of planet hopping, uh, you know, solving problems and doing quests within the planet. I haven't really hit the main plot of the game. So far, it's just me getting my bearings and I'm on to like the third planet I think that I visited so I'm not very far in although I have heard the game itself is not on the same kind of size or scale as something like Fallout or Fallout New Vegas which is what Obsidian's last title in the Fallout series was. A very very good New Vegas if you can get your hands on it. I'm enjoying a lot of what I play but if you're coming into this thinking it's the new Fallout it's not really. Um, Fallout is a kind of very large map where you can kind of go off and do whatever the hell you want. But it does have a story, but you know, you don't really need to follow it. This is a lot closer to something like Knights of the Old Republic, in that you are following the story. You are taken to different areas, and those areas do have large maps, but you know, you don't stay there very long. You do the quests, you do the side quests in there, and then you bail. You know, you might come back later for other side quests, but for the most part, once you're done, you're done. And you move on to the next planet, and the next planet, and so on. Uh, just following the plot along, where in Fallout, you kind of just do whatever the hell you want. It's a bit more like, it's like Elder Scrolls and that kind of thing. That's not to say that it's not a good game. It's like, it's a lot of fun. Combat wise, you're kind of like first person shooter style things. Although I did say you have melee weapons, so you can, you know, you can play it as a guy who just walks up and clubs people. You have access to um, this kind of slowdown thing that because you've been in cryo sleep for so long, your perception of time is different to everybody else kind of shit. It's slowdown, right? Um, and that lets you target specific spots on the enemy, so a bit like Vats from Fallout, but it doesn't stop time like Vats does, it's, this just slows it down. And you can target headshots, or you can try to cripple people, or shoot guns out of their hands, that kind of thing. And then conversation options, or just uh, general quest um, options, so like you might have the fairly basic uh, the good guy, the bad guy side of the quest, and you can say, oh I'm gonna help the good guy, or I'm gonna be an asshole, and I'm gonna help the bad guy, or whatever like that. But there's a lot of more nuance, uh, it's not always necessarily clear who's the good guy and even at that you might only want to half help them and kind of, you know, half help the other person so you can get a kind of different outcome. There's a lot of different nuance you can uh, achieve and uh, even then that's based on your skills so you can kind of talk somebody into, you know, you might have done something that was bad for them. Uh, but you can talk them around and saying, hey, no, it was actually a good thing, you know, you wanted me to do that. And hey, I can help you out by doing this other thing. It's good, you know, it's not black and white. It, there's some really good writing going on here. And then there's a really good comedy, so it doesn't take itself super serious, even though this is extreme dystopia. <laughs> but I'm really liking The Outer Worlds. I've played a bit more of this than I have of the other games this month, so I've got a bit more on this. But even then, I don't think I've really scratched them. But anyway, The Outer Worlds is available on uh, PC, PS4, Xbox One, and I think there's a Switch port uh, on the way, but I don't think there's even a date for it yet, but check it out! Any progress on that matter we discussed? Wonderful. This is fantastic. Well worth all the sacrifices I... Wait. What the fuck is this? Is this... 
French? I can't fucking read French. Those are some of the games I played for October 2019. Outer Worlds I'm having a lot of fun with, I'm still playing it at the moment. I'm enjoying kind of building up my character and uh, you know, talking to my different companions and just going about the world, it's really interesting and nicely well written. Indivisible, I didn't play a lot of it, but what I played was really really nice, uh, so I am looking forward to going back to that, hopefully sometime soon. Disco Elysium, I need like a spare like week just to play that by itself, uh, it's just so engrossing. And when I did play it, I just completely lost track of time. It's it's uh, dangerous. It's a dangerous game, but it's really damn good. And the Bradwell Conspiracy, what I played was um, kind of relaxing and chill, but it's just so uh, glitchy and the performance was kind of just, it just got in the way of it. So it wasn't really that much fun to play. Looking into next month, uh, so I was going to do Luigi's Mansion this month, but I didn't get around to playing it. So that will be in November's video instead. Also, Death Stranding, uh, Hideo Kojima's latest game, so hopefully you see something interesting on that. Also looking at Star Wars, Fallen Order, Jedi, whatever collection of words that is, I don't know. The combat looks kind of interesting, it doesn't look like it's just smack the guys with a bat, you know, this seems like there's some thought put into it, so we'll see. And then a game I uh, kickstarted, it's uh, called Lost Ember, it's like this kind of creature hopping game. Uh, it looks like a lot of fun. I've been following it on its campaign. You know, I tend to just um, fund it and then see if it made its funding and then kind of ignore it and wait for it to come out. So uh, I have no idea how this will turn out, but I'm looking forward to it anyway. Let me know what you thought of this month's games. Um, did you like them? Did I miss any? You know, did I miss, did I have a very bad opinion of something or a good opinion of something? Uh, or if you're looking forward to any of the games for next month, or if there's any you think I should be looking at down the line, uh, just let me know. Uh, otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.